Thought I'd take a video of this while the pattern is still visible here. Uh, before I add tacks to it and a handle and stuff. So what I've done is I got this four point star. I've added center lines to it of 15 and 20. Um, we've got those explodey bits in the corner here, 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 here. And so what I want to do, I think, uh, this is kind of a decision on the fly, but I think I'm going to weld this up and then I'm going to re-square it again at another 45 um, because then the points of the star here that are on the sides will become the points of, of the um, finished billet so that the star will become elongated this way and this way. And um, these sections should get pushed in a little bit as I push the corner in. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it does to these. It'll just, it ought to just spread them out some. Um, and then, uh, then we'll probably four-way that again later once I have this star with uh, its points aligned with the points of the square pill that I'll end up with. So I'm going to tack it up and then we'll uh, watch the foraging of that. Here's a quick look at how I have got it tacked up right before I put it in the fire. You can see just some simple side tacks at each one of the outside seams and one hefty center tack on each end. Got that thicker handle on there. We're going to put some oil on it and boom, right into the fire. Got the heat shield. Now I'm just letting it cook. And I'm going to wait for it to get up to heat, which uh, is set for 2165 as the set point. It'll start clicking, I'll soak it for a while, and I'll pull it out and uh, straight away weld it up. When I first started mosaic work, the first few four ways I did I was nervous about, you know, welding in a couple directions at once isn't something that you're used to when uh, you're making the more simple um, bump and grind or coined patterns or uh, even the twist patterns. But uh, just, you know, doing a few of these, you get a feel for it and they become pretty manageable, especially with a bigger hammer and some flat dies. It's kind of a fun weld to make. You always got to just watch your side seams like a hawk and tumble it really often to where you're getting everything pushed together from both ways before it can start spreading out too much from being forged in the other direction. Very much a kind of capture it from all sides and pat it together thing. A lot of guys would do this on a hydraulic press in um, like square dies, but it works great on the hammer too. Coming out for a second heat after a nice soak to get some grain growth across the boundaries. You can see we're nice and hot there. And uh, we're going to start crushing it here for the four-way. Oh, you can see I almost lost control there. You really got to watch out that your dies don't bite um, a deep groove right in the middle of the billet and then you get stuck there. So if you start kind of like uh, rocking the billet a little bit with each bite, it helps pop it out of whatever groove the hammer made. It's only a problem when your corners are just sharp at the beginning of your four-way. After a minute, the flats start to build up and it gets much easier to manage that sort of thing. But 
this, you got to look at a lot of cues. You got to feel your handle, look at your handle. You got to look at the pattern in the end of the billet. You got to look at the side seams. You got to look at where anything like a stripe of 15 and 20 is surfacing on the sides of the billet. Whatever can serve as a clue and kind of tell you where your corners need to be and then where your um, old sides were. Whatever you can do for reference points and then just looking at the sides of the billet, you keep the flats that you just forged um, perpendicular to the dies after you've tumbled at 90 on both sides. Just check everything that you can to make sure that you're at the right angle because uh, as we've already seen, having a four-way that is or having a uh, re-square that is slightly less or more than the angle that you want can really be annoying. So you can see I started before the um, tumble and forge on the bias with quite a heavy cross-section billet and I've actually accomplished the um, re-square here with quite a heavy cross-section still, uh, which I was happy about. Uh, that's always my preference is to do a re-square and then still have some cross-section, cross-sectional thickness left to, to have options afterwards and preserve billet thickness, especially for the wider knives that I like to make. At any rate, here I found myself um, in the enviable position of having actually a um, re-squared billet that was still a little heavier than I needed it to be. So I figured, what the heck, let's actually slap it in the other machine, use the drawing, mild drawing dies to our advantage and see how that does for fun. Yes, that's right. The 250 pound Niles Bement utility hammer converted to air is making its debut as a useful drawing hammer in my shop. I've used it before, but it's better set up now than it has been. I added a 500 gallon air tank. You'll see that in the next video about the hammer itself. But uh, boy, it actually hit, hit hard and um, kept forging until I was actually done with the heat. And uh, it's a ton of fun to use. Very gratifying after the amount of work that I've put into getting this secondary hammer running since I got it last year. I think this heat right here was the first time I felt like it was beginning to pull its own weight. Yeah, that was fun. I'm, I'm very happy about that hammer. I always wanted it to be a drawing machine and a general purpose shape forging machine and it's, it's already doing the former and it's on its way to being controllable enough for the latter. Here we have a little bit different of an angle. Um, I wanted to kind of give you my perspective uh, if I'm really trying to square something up lengthways on the dies and the bowdry. I'm just kind of finish squaring this and finish flattening it um, for the next re-square now that I've drawn out the length that I needed to cut into four pieces on the uh, Niles Bement hammer. That four-way turned out better. I got my angle pretty much dead on. The point is there, point is there. They're not perfectly combined at two of the points, but it is straight. And it's close enough that, especially once it gets down to a smaller resolution, that won't stand out much. So I am 
real happy with the results here. Um, what ha what what else I hoped for happened, and and that was that pushing these what were formerly corners in that way, straightened out the bulges in the sides of these stars to a great degree and elongated the points. So it's really come to look like the star I wanted it to, the compass rose or a north star or whatever you want to call it. So basically we have a pattern now with a black background and shiny compass roses and small fireballs. And the fireballs are looking pretty cool. They're not what I originally envisioned, but I think they'll look be a nice um, counterpoint to the primary pattern, secondary pattern, black background. So it does have the, um, the multi-layer look that I like in a lot of my stuff. And these are nearly square. By the time I grind them a little bit, they'll be square and ready to tack up and get another weld on them. We'll four-way it again, by golly. And uh, then maybe we'll leave it after the next four-way, but uh, we will we will see.